What's an assault rifle? Uh, like one of them really large guns. <laughs> Let me ask you, are you aware of what the differentiation is between automatic and semi-automatic? No. People either have the right to protect themselves or they don't. And there is no data to say that stripping people of the right to self-protection would make us safer. So for this week's installment of Change My Mind, we decided to revisit the very topical issue of gun control in the Second Amendment. Matter of fact, we returned to UT Dallas where we conducted our last segment on this topic to see if anything had changed. And I don't want nobody. Want nobody. And I don't want now, we're going to get to the two fully unedited interviews in a second. That's the whole purpose of Change My Mind, to see what real conversations in real time, uh, how they unfold. But two things that really struck me first. Uh, number one, in a day full of conversations, it seemed that none of the even highly educated students knew anything about basic proper firearm classifications or terminology. Well, f I know fully automatic is, is the one that is like restricted. Or an assault like, rifle, like what, why does someone need that? Or an assault rifle or, uh, you know, an automatic machine gun or ARs. The same assault rifle that was used in the recent Florida shooting. And two, everyone wanted to talk about Florida, obviously, but shockingly, not a single student, not one, had ever heard of the far deadlier Sutherland Springs shooting, which took place in their own backyard. Remember the Sutherland Springs shooting? That was right here in Texas. Mm -hmm. You know what happened there, right? Did the name Stephen Williford mean anything to you? No. Do you remember the Sutherland Springs shooting? No. Does the name Stephen Williford mean anything to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. You remember the Sutherland Springs yeah. shooting? Yeah. I've heard of it. Just now, with the other girl. From me? Yeah, from you. Absolutely terrifying. How could they not know of a shooting with 26 deaths, another 20 injured, which occurred only four hours away, in which the shooter was stopped by an NRA certified instructor with an AR-15, a national hero, mind you, Stephen Williford. But I repeat myself. On with the conversations. Yeah, okay, sir, what was your name again? Mawad. Mawad. Yes. All right. Mawad. Um, I've asserted my position, I think, pretty, hopefully pretty clearly. Mm -hmm. um, changed my mind. So what do you think about Australia? 1996. What about Australia? When they, uh, they, they buy back. Yeah. Uh, I think it's terrible. Really? Mm -hmm. Why? I think, a, I think a gun ban stripping citizens of the right to protect themselves, I think that's uh, an immoral act. But I mean, what if you look at the statistics behind that? Mm -hmm. The decline of, you know, shootings, deaths by gun. It's probably much less than we have per day here. No what? No, it didn't. It didn't have a statistical effect on uh, on violent crime or even gun crime. Matter of fact, the one about the day. online articles that talk, that there, say yeah, just written, otherwise. We've written plenty of them as well over at uh, LadderWithKyder.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, something even more fascinating: there's an overall decrease in violent crime. There's an overall decrease often in, 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 in gun crime. Mm -hmm. um, and in New Zealand, where they didn't have a mandatory buyback, mm -hmm. you saw the same kind of overall trends. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I think it's I think it's horrible. Uh, I think we both admit it's a ban. Okay. It was a, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it was considered a buyback, which has been proposed here. It was a mandatory buyback. Mm -hmm. So that's a gun ban. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question to you would be, um, you, would you like to do that in the United States? I would love to, to be honest, personally. Just ban guns? Honestly, like, what? I mean, I understand there's, it's fun shooting a gun. I've been to a gun range before. Uh, there's a nice adrenaline feeling when you're shooting at a target, like, you know, and it's just satisfying when you hit the middle of the target, and it's just sure. like any other sport, sure, per se, but um, I feel like we would gain so much more as a country in the long run if you're thinking of a bigger picture, like, less possibilities of psychos killing people, like in Las Vegas, or just most recently, where 17 people died in a school. Right. Uh, I mean, honestly, like, if I were to give up my, my favorite hobby, playing soccer, if that meant that hundreds of people wouldn't die, I would gladly do it any day because yeah. I love my country that much. Great. What do you believe the Second Amendment is about? Uh, the about right to bear on the right to bear arms to protect yourself. And that's pretty much what I know. I'm really ignorant on this, if I'm honest. So, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, listen. I appreciate you sitting down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mean to be contentious, but you mentioned it as a hobby. Mm -hmm. So, um, the First Amendment. Okay. Right, the right to freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that's absolute? Do you believe that you should have the right to speak freely without having that be infringed yeah. upon by the government? Definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And why do you believe that? Uh, because just being able to express your beliefs uh, publicly and having that as, you know, a freedom is is essential to the development of a democracy in a country. And but where do you get that from? In what sense? Like, what do you mean? 
well, where do you get the, the right to the freedom of, of speech? You said you believe that that is fundamental, you believe that that's very important to a democracy or to a, like a constitutional republic. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just gave you a hint there in that uh, in that, it's uh, in the Constitution. In that yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, the, so your right to freedom, because you know the freedom of speech is not ab absolute, it doesn't exist across many other countries, including free countries, mm -hmm. including Australia, mm -hmm. by the way. You don't have the right to free speech in Australia. Okay. So you believe the right to freedom of speech is absolute mm -hmm. because of the Constitution, the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. Amendment number two is what? The right to bear arms. Okay. So did the Australians amend their whatever constitution they have when they had that buyback? Uh, I can't speak to the specifics of all elements of the Australian constitution. Okay. Now, I do know, again, that uh, where I come from, for example, in Canada, you can be jailed for speech that's offensive, or you can be fined. Mm -hmm. So we decided to do things differently from many places in mm -hmm. Europe, and certainly Australia as it relates to freedom of speech, as well as the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important. You just said you believe freedom of speech is absolute. Why? Because you accept the premise mm -hmm. that these rights, as recognized by the constitution, mm -hmm. Are fundamental human rights. So when it comes to so, the life and of our citizens, yes, do, do you not believe that we have, let's say, any, let's like, what if, just you know, in general, like, does when it comes to protecting the lives of citizens and, sure. and immigrants and anyone who lives in America, just yeah. when it comes to that, do you believe that there should be some flexibility in our constitution to uh, protect our people? So. Well, first off, a couple of couple of key issues there, right? Okay. Um, you would have to uh, open it wide, and now all of a sudden nothing is absolute. So your freedom of speech is not absolute. So you would have to be comfortable with that. Secondly, it's based on this premise that we would save lives by removing the Second Amendment, which I, I don't agree with. But let's go with, with number one. Mm -hmm. um, do you see what a problem that is if you just say, well, let's hold on a second because we think we can be safer. Let's give up this fundamental right to protection uh, as mm -hmm. recognized mm -hmm. in the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. Can we acknowledge or maybe find common ground there? That, that'd be a real problem because it's the same constitution that affords you and I the right to do what we're doing right now. I mean, I understand that mm -hmm. wholeheartedly, mm -hmm. but if we're thinking of the bigger picture here where, like, I mean, I've seen things on social media where people believe that teachers should have guns. And I mean, so do you just, as a human being, do you think that the amount of shootings that we have every day in our mm -hmm. country would decrease if we had a buyback? Like just um, thinking, you know, basic common sense. Okay, so we've now, I want to make sure that we're, we're clear here. Mm -hmm. We've hopscotched past the idea of human rights. Mm -hmm. Seems like that's not an area you're super comfortable with. Oh. Because now you're talking about stripping someone of their fundamental I mean, right to self-protection. Is, is having a gun... If it saves someone else's life. I mean, why not? Why not? I mean, okay. why not, you know, like, take that step as a country? Take that step as a country? Yeah, so why removing not? Removing someone's right to protect themselves. Protect themselves from what? So explain to me since I'm... So, the Second Amendment, so you, are, um, I don't all mean I've to be smart ass. No, 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 you're, do okay. your thing, man. Okay, so the, <laughs> yeah. the Second Amendment, you, are, do you, you want me to explain what it is? No, uh, yeah, sure. Okay, Go so ahead. the Second Amendment was designed to allow citizens to protect themselves, uh, themselves both from an internal and external threats. Mm -hmm. That means mm -hmm. the right to protect, obviously, mm -hmm. their home, property, mm -hmm. but mainly to protect themselves from a tyrannical government. Okay. Because they fled a tyrannical government, they fought them off, right? These were basically unorganized mm -hmm. uh, militias. Mm -hmm. Who is a militia? It's everyone. You and I are the militia. Mm. And the only way to ensure that there can be a well-regulated militia, meaning a capable militia, is that all citizens have the right, law-abiding citizens, to keep and bear arms. That's what it was designed to do. You're proposing um, giving the government the very failsafe it's designed against, to protect mm. against a tyrannical government. You're saying, let's give the government the authority to strip people of rights. That's like I mean, a, feed, a feedback loop of just a violation of human rights on a scale that I don't think you so might know. you personally, do you think having the right to free speech is more important than having the right to a gun? No. I think you they're don't. both equally important. You think important. they're both equally important? Yeah. So you think, like, for the development of our country, it's essential to have guns and free speech, and you think they're on the same level in a scale? I think the right to own and keep firearms. So it's more of like a right thing yes. for you? Okay. Well, I mean, why why is it just America that we have tens of thousands of deaths per year? It's not. We, I mean, it is on it. If you look at statistics. No, we're not even top wrong, 25. Oh, really? Yeah, we're not even top 25 when it comes to firearm deaths. We're not even the, we are the most armed populace, but we're not even the top uh, country for mass shootings. Matter of fact, we're behind Norway and France. Even though more people here have guns. I don't know. I've I think we're never heard of these statistics before, honestly. I don't know where you get yours from because all of the ones that I've seen okay. show that America is always topping that list. Okay. Uh, well, let's say we're able to show you statistics afterward. Okay. Let's, okay, sure. let's yeah. assume that those are correct. Okay. okay? Um, it still doesn't get to the question. Let's assume, let, let's assume none of them are correct. 
what okay. gives you the right or what gives anyone here the right to strip someone of their ability to protect themselves so why don't we dissect that a little what are we protecting ourselves from I know you mentioned it from internal and external threat yes. threats so what are those threats tyrannical government okay first we and went, foremost. Yeah. yeah okay and then of course the ability to protect yourself from anyone who wants to do you harm from evil people who are willing to commit uh, harm I mean I don't I don't know why that that should you know have anything to do with being able to own an assault rifle or assault rifle or uh, you know an automatic machine gun or anything like that okay first off a couple things there um, what do you um, what's an assault rifle uh, like one of them really large guns <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's not. And, I'm just quoting uh, Call of Duty. Yeah, I know. I oh, mean, yeah. so you mentioned a few things. What kind of? Where do you get your news from? Forgive me, or, or your sources. Um, what, what do you usually read? Uh, CNN. Uh, okay. CNN. Twitter. <laughs> CNN, Twitter, and a lot of professors probably here. Probably right. Mm -hmm. um, everything that you have said here, and I say this respectfully, is, mm -hmm. is, is incorrect about the Australia buyback, the statistics about that, about uh, the Second Amendment, now about assault rifles and automatic weapons. None of the shootings that you've discussed, that we've discussed here, involved automatic weapons. Certainly not Florida. Mm -hmm. These are not automatic weapons. Automatic weapons are already heavily regulated. They're basically all but unattainable for the average citizen. What did the citizen. Las Vegas guy use? Yeah, he used, he used semi-automatic okay. weapons. So semi-automatic. And switch that word. What about that? Why do, why do people need difference. to have that? I'm sorry, I, I didn't know, but... Do you I want to explain to you what the difference is? Because sure. that's, that's really important. Don't you think, because you, you sat, here's something, and I, I appreciate you sitting down. Mm -hmm. But you sat down here, and you were willing to strip people of their rights. You were willing to say, listen, it's time to progress as a country, which I'll get to in a second, mm -hmm. um, will cause countless more muggings, murders, rapes of innocent people, the likes of which you've never, you've never even been able to comprehend and didn't take into account. You were willing to remove the right of those innocent civilians to protect themselves based on completely faulty data and knowledge of things that simply aren't so. There's a huge difference between an automatic weapon, that's a machine gun, and a semi-automatic weapon. A semi-automatic weapon is every handgun. Mm -hmm. Pull the trigger once, it goes bang. That's a semi-automatic weapon. That's most hunting rifles. That's nearly all handguns that are used for self-defense. So my point is, if, if and I say this respect because a lot of people who sat down, so this is not an insult, but almost mm -hmm. everything that you just said is, is, is incorrect as a premise. Mm -hmm. And you were using that, or going up based on that knowledge, um, to justify the stripping of someone's ability to protect themselves. That is deeply uh, so concerning what if we, to me. So I obviously went to the extreme of just banning guns. What if we in, you know, improved our regulation, or okay. improved our, our, our way of giving people access to these guns? Okay. So we've got enough. So you would say now, let's not ban guns. So I'm, um, yeah, with respect, because you know you gotta okay. please everyone. So okay. let's just say we want to, you know, just take another step. What we, do you think we're at a, you know, a good state where we're at right now? Well, I don't want, I don't want to. Let's just say, do you, uh, with what I just said, would, would you acknowledge now that okay, just banning guns could have some real serious ramifications, and, and maybe you, you spoke a little too quickly on that. That might not be a good mm -hmm. idea. Oh, I'm sorry. What? So, so would you agree with that? Maybe that's not a good idea to just ban guns. Sure. Okay. So what kind of regulations would you like to see, and why? Just making it probably more difficult for people such as the Las Vegas shooter, the Orlando shooter, and things like that to Hundred. get access to guns like okay. that can and cause such you know, huge calamities to our country. Um, how would you do it? What do you think? I'm asking you. You're, you're supposed to change my mind. I mean, I'm just saying like we're not in a good place where we're at right now with regards to guns. Really? And from the statistics that I've seen, I don't know what which ones you have, and I'd really love to look at the ones afterwards. Absolutely, yeah. And from what I've seen and what I've been convinced through that data is that America is not in a good place with regards data to guns. Data from and CNN and Twitter and professors <laughs> you, is, is wrong. Um, uh, okay, so you've, I'm assuming you probably never purchased a firearm. No, I haven't. Okay. So if you purchase a firearm right now, they run a background check. Okay. Okay? Okay. If you're a criminal, if you're a felon, you can't get a gun. Okay. If you've committed violent misdemeanors, you can't get a gun. Okay. Domestic abuser, you can't get a gun. Mm -hmm. Legally declared mentally unfit, you can't get a gun. Get or own? You, Meaning can, you, you cannot can obtain. You cannot purchase a gun. Okay. Okay. Okay? Okay. So these already exist if you go to purchase a firearm. Mm -hmm. Now again, all these Twitter memes and stats, don't believe them. I mean, it's not don't memes, mean anything it's, it's actual you're... like links to articles and, and whatnot. Very, very factually It's not just like articles. someone... I mean, I could show you what I've read just, but, like, but, literally um, just now. 
the, the, the point I'm making here is a lot of this would mm -hmm. be very easily refuted by yourself if you'd ever purchased a firearm. You would know it's not. You would know it's not true because you've gone through the process. Mm -hmm. Everyone here who's ever purchased a firearm has gone through that process mm -hmm. and knows that there are strict regulations. Mm -hmm. um, so we've gone from okay, maybe banning all guns to how do we make it more difficult mm -hmm. for people to purchase? Well, we we already do those things. So what else would you? Do. Then why do people get guns? Like people that commit these crazy crimes. Like well, why is that still happening? You're, ni you're 19 times more likely to be knifed than ever shot. In well, this I mean, country. So I, think, why I feel do like you're 19. I mean, I'm just throwing fake statistics, but I feel like you're much more likely to survive getting stabbed than shot. But the point is, why do people go out and stab? I mean, people? there's crazy people out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, why? What can we do as a country, in your opinion, uh, Stephen? Right, Stephen? Yes, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. I just googled you. Uh, so. Um, like, what do you think we can take? What's our next step? Because we're obviously, like, this just happened, like, le a week ago, you know? So, I, don't like, believe, what, I don't believe that, that you human think it's rights just, like, something change. we should overlook? Well, no, I think, I, think you're ov I think you've overlooked a lot of data. Okay. I think you've overlooked empirical evidence. And I think you're, you're wanting to pass legislation through an emotive response right now. And I appreciate where you're coming from. I mm -hmm. think it's an empathetic place. And I would hope that you believe where I'm coming from is an equally empathetic place. It's just mm -hmm. a different solution. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that you want to save more lives. Okay. Now, what you have proposed to save more lives, we've started with literally completely Boy, stripping yeah. people of guns, mm -hmm. which is uh, very extreme. I believe that's what the left wants to do, though, so I appreciate okay. you being honest. Mm -hmm. um, to, okay, maybe there's some legislation there that we do or don't know what it would look like. Mm -hmm. um, let, let me, I, I've talked about this quite a bit today. Our goal is to save lives. Mm -hmm. How many lives are lost? You said we're in a really bad place with guns in our country we are. right now. Are we not? No. Are you going to say we're not? No, so I don't think, think we're we okay. I, listen, I think, every, I think we are, no, and I'm, I'm not going to say perfect. I think a, a shooting is an absolute tragedy. Can, is there room for improvement? Or you think that we're just like at a flat line? Where we're, There's always room for improvement, certainly. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. when there are 39 incidents, uh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, yeah, it's, it is, my fingers, it is cold. My fingers freeze up a lot. I think my, my mouth <laughs> might be getting blue now. I've been out here for so long. Oh, um, you got water. If, okay. uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, we were talking, is there room for improvement? Um, I think a man who had 39 reports, two mm -hmm. tips to the FBI, blew away a chicken. This is a guy you're talking about, Florida, who uh, legally should not have been able to purchase a firearm. Okay. But legally, you also can't go buy crack, right? People find ways around the law. Get, yeah. Okay. No matter what, that's inevitable. That's inevitable. Okay. That's inevitable. Now, uh, as far as we're not in a good place in our country as it relates to firearms, uh -huh. that's not true. Overall, violent crime has been decreasing pretty consistently over the last several decades. Where's so, the statistic? I don't believe that. What if I said I don't like this? I don't believe I'll, it. I'll show you okay. statistics afterward. Okay. But um, I mean, you can even, if, if, if you would like to, after this, Google violent crime statistics. They've been okay. consistently decreasing. Okay. And the assault weapons ban, which was uh, in place between 1994 and 2004, had mm -hmm. no discernible effect at all oh, on yeah? gun crime. Okay. Um, how many, but let's look at something that hopefully we can just agree upon because you're saying maybe I don't agree on your stats. Mm -hmm. um, I'll show them to you afterward and hopefully sure. we can find some common sure, ground sure, on that. Sure. Let's find something that's absolute, absolute okay. that we can agree upon. Okay. How many lives do you know are lost to firearms each year in the United States? I know it's in the thousands. Yeah. Uh, if you include suicides, it's 30-something thousand. Okay. If you don't, it's anywhere from 12 to, you know, in the teens of thousands, depending on the yeah, source. Yeah, that's... Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that sound about right? Uh, something, I've okay. something like that, yeah. So that's... Let's let's take the, the highest total, 30,000. Okay. Okay. okay, including suicides. I don't really think it's fair to, but let's do that. Um, what if I were to tell you that 500,000 to... At meaning a minimum to mm -hmm. over 3 million lives each year saved by defensive use of firearms in the United States. That's according to the National Safety Council and CDC. Exponentially more lives saved through law-abiding citizens who own and keep firearms protecting themselves than lost. Saved from like what? Like what's the criteria for that? Meaning, meaning lives saved, meaning from active crime stopped from them using a firearm. And by the way, that doesn't necessarily include all the statistics of most of the time if you own a firearm, you simply show that you brandish the firearm and criminals will move along down the trail. But yeah. innocent lives being saved, this is according to the CDC, National okay. Safety Council, through okay. defensive use of firearms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A low end of 500,000, they said potentially to over 3 million. So if we're talking about we're not in a good place so in like our we'll country. save more lives with, with more you, guns. Would, would, you, would you at least uh, um, entertain the idea that perhaps a way to save more innocent lives from being lost is encouraging uh, firearm education and responsible firearm ownership? Considering the discrepancy, it's exponentially more likely that an innocent life is saved in the United States by a firearm. So let's say there's that that ratio of there is deaths prevented versus deaths caused by gun violence. Do you think that would decrease if 
there were more limitations on access to guns. No. How so? Well, there's no evidence to suggest that it would. I know. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, just... I've got it. Listen, I've got to base my opinion based on, on two things. First on off, on, on the, uh, the Second Amendment and the Constitution and how it's recognized, okay? Okay. Because if you don't recognize that, then you don't have any rights. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any rights. Sounds to me like you enjoy some of the rights, but you don't necessarily agree with other rights. Then you have to base it on uh, undeniable uh, statistical, empirical data. And we have that. That's what forms my opinion, not how I feel or react based on a horrible tragedy. And, and no one here is saying that it isn't mm -hmm. when that occurs. Um, but you just don't, you don't hear about those stories a lot. That makes sense. I mean, I don't, honestly, like, at the end of the day, like, I feel like if you just look at it from a common sense perspective, because you have your statistics and apparently I have mine, and, and I mean, honest, like when you think about it, like... Oops. He just hit your camera. Oops. <laughs> okay. Oh, a tolerant dude. <laughs> and uh, uh, real quick, I really respect what you're doing here. Uh, Thank you very like, much. I, I love that, it. despite our extremely, you know, dis our extreme disagreement in certain things, I I really respect that you're, Thank you, you know, you're not even hiring your voice, and I, I would, really respect I would, that. I would a lot. shake your hand, but it's a fist bump, it's it's so cold, cold bump. <laughs> so let me, no, let, me, let me hold your hand and get it warmed up. <laughs> no, um, I, I really respect this. First Thank of all, you very so, much. No, and listen, uh, and I'm not offended by anything you said, so I really appreciate that I, as well. And here's the thing: if if and I like you want to offend me, uh, that's fine. No, I, I mean, um, I mean, just I want to learn first no, of all, and I I've shown you where my perspective. I hope you you understand where I'm coming from. I understand where you're coming from, and I think you're. I think here's the thing: I think you're you're an empathetic person who wants to save lives, right? Um. And I'm just trying to tell you that, that first off, you can't save every life, right? Okay. I, that's where I believe you're coming from. I don't, I, I don't believe in ascribing a motive. You know, you see this right now at the CNN Town Hall. Why don't you care about the lives lost? No, why don't these people care about the lives saved? I mean, a good example is we, we don't hear about, remember the Sutherland Springs shooting? That was right here in Texas. Mm -hmm. You know what happened there, right? Does the name Stephen Williford mean anything to you? No. Okay. This is, so I have a show it's called Lotto with Crowder. Okay. Stephen Williford was someone okay. I interviewed on my show. Okay. okay, this was after the Southern. You remember the Sutherland Springs shooting? I have. I've heard of it. I don't remember oh, it exactly. Killed far more people than the one in Florida. Okay. Uh, deadly shooting in Sutherford Springs, uh, just outside of uh, San Antonio, Texas. Okay. Um, oh, so, so, sorry, so, Sutherland Springs. Sutherland. Yeah. Okay. Sutherland Springs. Yeah, Sutherland. Sutherland. Sorry, okay. I said Sutherford because that's Stephen Williford. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this was a very deadly shooting that occurred at a church. Mm -hmm. This was within the last uh, four months. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure you've seen all the press, obviously, after Florida, boycott mm -hmm. the NRA, gun mm -hmm. control now, mm -hmm. the CNN mm -hmm. town hall. Stephen Williford is someone we interviewed on our show, okay? The reason I interviewed him on our show, this lowly little podcast, was because no, no one else was really even calling him. No one else really wanted to hear his story. Do you know who Stephen Williford is? No. He's the man who stopped the active shooter with an AR-15. Okay. It was a man shooting up a church. An evil man shooting up a church, mm -hmm. and Stephen Williford, who is a hero, shot him with an AR-15 and stopped it. So the media didn't so, even interview. So I guess him. are you saying like everyone should get an AR-15? No, I'm not saying everyone should get an AR-15. But what I'm saying is, you say you have your facts and you have your data, and then you acknowledge that perhaps you're misinformed on some of these issues. You mentioned CNN. Okay. Why didn't CNN have Stephen Williford? This was a more deadly shooting carried out against a church here in Texas. Stephen Williford, he wasn't some kid who happened to be maybe even a different wing of the school or mm. wasn't even there that day. Mm. This was the man who personally stopped the active shooter. You don't even know his name. Mm. Should that maybe, maybe illuminate that there's a bias in, in, in today's media that isn't giving you the full story? And if you don't believe me on anything, you, you can go watch my interview with Stephen Williford and you can go Google the Sutherland Springs shooting mm. and Stephen Williford. It was an unbelievably deadly shooting. And he stopped it with an AR-15. I mean, I still go back to my initial thing, like, more guns equals more deaths by gun. Like, you can't tell me that's incorrect. It is incorrect. How? I just I just. I mean, like, no, I mean, I get it. Because more but lives like, are saved by firearms. More lives are saved by defensive uses of firearms. And there is no statistical data to suggest, you know, you started with... Well, you started with, let's just get rid of the Second Amendment. I mean, I, maybe I, let's get rid of yeah. automatics. Okay. Then maybe semi-automatics. So, uh -huh. again, either way, and I think what we found here is... No matter any way you slice it, for you to change, you have to do away with the Second Amendment and ban guns. But it's not about automatic, it's not about a bump stock, semi-automatic, now it's all guns. <laughs> um, people either have the right to protect themselves or they don't. And there is no data to say that stripping people of the right to self-protection would make us safer.
As a matter of fact, there is some data to suggest otherwise. New York, Chicago, places with California, lots of places with very strict gun laws. It's the most violent gun crime in the in in the the country. Okay, I understand. I guess it makes it look like I'm saying that guns don't protect people. Guns are this and that, and like they all they bring is harm. But I'm saying that I still believe. Like, until I look at those statistics that you're okay. talking about, I still like fully believe that sure. more access to guns is going to lead to more psychotic people getting you know, through the system that we currently have. I mean, at least you would have to agree that we need some type of change with regards to regulation. You can't tell me we're fine and we're doing okay. And like, I sure would do away with some things. For example, I would do away with 30-day uh, um, waiting periods for firearms. Oh, yeah? I would do away with that. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I would I would do away without with uh, people not being able to purchase suppressors for hunting. So you, I believe so it would be more just, safe that's, if that's people just, can. Uh, well, you know, so you just think we shouldn't limit the type of audience that gets access to guns? No, we already do. We already I mean, do you do. don't think we don't need any more of a limitation? Like, okay, so let let me ask you what what ways or what you know what um, avenues can we take to ensure that things like Las Vegas won't happen again? You can never ensure that things like Las Vegas won't happen. Or at least that bad. All you can do, here's the thing, and we talked about this uh, on the program not long ago, human beings commit horrible acts of evil, okay? You can never stop them from doing that. Mm -hmm. you, ban, you ban guns in, in Australia, violent crime is the same. In the UK, violent crime has gone up. People find a way. Look at, uh, we're actually okay, so I mean, in you, more, there were shootings in France. Look, okay. at, look at Nice. Look at what's what's happened. Look at the terrorist attacks. Who has the mo you who can't has, stop it. Does, does UK have more gun deaths than we uh, do? Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure they don't. They have more violent crime. Now, here, okay. here's something else that's also important. Comparing violent crime statistics across countries is very difficult because they have different standards for violent crime. Uh -huh. If you look in the United States, uh, places with the strictest gun laws have some of the worst gun crime. Mm. Now, uh, as far as I don't, I'm not so concerned with just gun crime. I'm concerned with violent crime. Okay. Violent crime. There is a statistical correlation between violent crime increasing and populaces being unarmed, being stripped of the ability to protect themselves. Uh, you even look at states. States where people carry firearms, or people are more likely to carry arms freely, they are less likely to be targeted, less likely to be attacked. There is often lower violent crime. So there are plenty of statistical correlations there. No one is saying that we are perfect, but I think human evil, I think we both acknowledge evil is a part of the human condition. You have some evil in you, so do I. People have evil in them, people have good in them. I believe all people have all of the above. So people will commit, people who get overrun with evil, they will commit acts of evil. It comes down to what's the best way to prevent that? Either you believe in disarming all good people, and also doing away with the Constitution and the rights that afford us everything else, mm -hmm. uh, like, such as the ability to peaceably assemble and speak freely, mm -hmm. or uh, you believe that allowing good people to protect themselves I don't is know. a solution. Okay. I'm, I don't know. I guess we'll agree to disagree to some extent. I, I understand. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you educated me a little bit on like the the positive side of guns, but I still feel like the fact that there's you know 17, 18 year old kids that got killed. It's terrible. I'm, it's, I mean, I feel like terrible, we need what, to do something. That's terrible, but what about something. the millions of... I mean, why don't you get, you know, the NRA the to do something of thousands, about that? What about the hundreds of thousands or millions of mothers who protect their children at home when dad's gone and someone breaks in, or the women who protect themselves from being raped, right? You're talking about 500,000 to over 3 million. So you can't just look... Would we agree? You can't legislate emotionally. Do you feel less uh, empathetic to that woman? Do you feel le less empathetic to the child who was protected by a firearm? I don't think so. And just as I don't feel less sympathetic to those lives lost. Yeah. So let me ask you this okay. before we go. Okay. If you were able to uh, research these things, and if, if the facts that I presented mm -hmm. bore out, and you said, okay, that checks out, would that perhaps uh, change or educate your opinion on, on firearms and Second Amendment a little differently? Uh, not completely, probably, but to an extent. Okay. Possibly, yeah. To sure. an extent. All right. Sure. Let me, let me, let's, let's, this is actually, oh. probably there's a whole lot. No, we don't need to do this right now. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, so. Okay, all right. Sorry, here. Um, okay, here. If you want to write this down here, let me, let me do this. Do so that, uh, write down, if you write down these notes. Sorry, everyone, I'm actually giving, just real quick, we'll continue. I'm giving him some notes on stats to research on his own because he's actually, he's really open and, and hunger for knowledge, and I appreciate that, so I'll take some time with him. Uh, Google CDC, Lives Saved Guns. CDC, or you can Google how many guns saved okay, per year. Guns. Yes. Um, Austra you can Google Australian buyback. Okay. 
actual effect. Or Australian buyback, so, violent crime. Okay, so let me ask you, why are there articles that are suggesting that uh, well, you know what? It, it, it's exponentially decreased? Does someone have uh, my, my phone here? Let me show you something really quickly because this even happens with me, by the way, and I do this professionally, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, and like I said, you, as someone who works in the media and as someone who's on mainstream media for a long time, Fox News, CNN did it for a long time, it's not always very honest. Okay. Uh, I even get caught in the sense that uh, mass shootings, I knew these numbers were wrong. Okay? So this is something that's been going around, it's been retweeted by people at CNN. This has been retweeted and, and posted tens of thousands of times, right? Mm -hmm. Gun massacres fell during the assault weapons ban. Okay? Okay. But here's the thing. They're using gun math. I was going, that doesn't make sense because I've looked at this number at least 50 times. I've used it. I've sourced it. Mm -hmm. What they did was they took six plus deaths. Okay. The standard is used extremely... is actually okay. four plus. So what it's been about used four? for a long time. It changes the statistics completely. Those were the standards that were originally set. So you have to look at the source. It comes from Louis Clarivis. Now, I can show you uh, what it is from, and then I do have to let other people come in here. Yeah. yeah. But. This is what is actually used as a government standard. So no the standard change. for mass shootings. As a matter of fact, it looks like it went up. Now, here's the thing. I'm being fair. If you look at that, right, I don't think that the assault weapons ban necessarily increased gun crime because there's a statistical correlation. It was going up regardless, and okay. now it's been going down a little bit. Uh -huh. So I'm not going so far the other way and say, look, the assault weapons ban is... increased gun crime. Okay. I think that's a more balanced point of view. Okay. Um, but it certainly didn't decrease it. That's using, using the legal standards. Anyone can create a statistic and they just say, well, hold on a second, I'm going to include six plus. Well, why don't you include four plus? That's what's been used to compare across different countries. Those are the studies that have been used. So often people will tweak that data to change the number. Little tricks like that occur so all that, the time. So that, that's the assault rifle ban that you're... Assault that, weapons ban Assault act. weapons yeah. ban act. It was I 94 it, to 2004. And the definition of a massacre assault. is four plus? It was four plus, yeah. Then why did six plus decrease? Or is that just like a... Well, how, then, then you have to get into the, again, you look at the numbers, uh -huh. how many more, uh, uh, the reason they included four plus was because there's a lot between four and six. Okay. Do we care less about those lives? Is that not considered a massacre? Yeah. So that's, no, I'm not saying that you do, but my mm -hmm. point is that people are dishonest and tweak the data all the time. And so that's why okay. I think it's important to I mean, actually just look at overall. I mean, it's not just that, like, you know, picture Yeah, but the undeniable fact is violent crime. You have to look at violent crime, not just gun crime. Overall oh, violent crime, and you have to look at how many lives are saved. Um, and then I would also recommend that you purchase a firearm. Just even if you return it, go through the process. I think you'll change your point of view even more. I think you'll realize it's significantly more difficult than you think. Um, I know my opinion changed. I'm, I'm Canadian, okay. uh, dual citizen. Was raised in Montreal. When I first purchased a firearm, I mean, I was told it's easier than buying a it's, it's easier than buying a pack of cigarettes. It's not true. So if you can I mean, buy a firearm, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy compared to it's not that easy. Other countries, it's much easier. Well, compared to other countries that don't allow you to own firearms, period, of course. Uh -huh. But in Canada, we're sitting, we, inve we invented the mass shooting in Canada. <laughs> we had three at schools, just in my hometown of Montreal. Anyways, All right, I do have to let other people in. Yeah. I appreciate you, man, taking the time. What's your name? Iman. Iman. Okay, nice to meet you, Iman. Do you mind if I if I eat a little bit while we're going? Because I've been sitting out here for hours. Yeah, I totally understand. Okay, would you mind scooching in a little bit, just so I just otherwise it's gonna I'm gonna throw out my shoulder. I got you. So, let me um. Is that a bird? I don't. It was pretty loud. Okay, uh, let me reassert my position just to make sure there's no uh, miscommunication here. I am an avid supporter of the Second Amendment and firearm ownership. I come from a country where that's not a legally recognized right, like Canada. I am open to new ideas and having my mind changed. Okay. Well, um, I believe that you have your right to own a gun. Like, that's not a problem. Now, I just think that the ease of accessibility of having a gun is the problem. And, like, this okay. culture that we have surrounding... Um, Owning a gun is like a bit problematic, and I mean that's my position. I think okay. you have a right to own a gun, okay, but not military grade, uh, like things that cause mass shootings. Okay, how would you define military grade? Assault rifles. What's an assault rifle? So like uh, AK-47. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, why would you differentiate between say an AK-47 and a Ruger Mini 31? Like pistols. No, that's also it's a common hunting rifle. Right. I'm not sure what you're asking. I, well, I, I guess I'm asking because you're the one who's proposing, uh, I assume, a ban on military s standard 
you just use the term assault rifle? Right. We don't need to have them like among citizens. I suppose people who have military training could have those because they're under jurisdiction, they've been trained, they've had background checks, etc. But regular citizens, such as a 19-year-old boy, it doesn't make sense that he had that gun legally. Mm. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> couple things. Um, you do have to go through a background check to legally purchase a firearm. It's not exclusive to the military. And um, again, I think it's important for you to define uh, what military spec would be. So you mean things like AR-15? Yes. The reason shootings? Okay. I forgot the name. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, okay, I apologize. Um, uh, an AR-15 is not a military rifle. Okay. They use M-16s. Um, an AR-15 is not an automatic weapon. So I think it's important when people are proposing gun control legislation to... It's important for me to understand what it is that you're proposing. Right. So when you say X guns shouldn't be in the hands of citizens, um, I, I, I would really like to, just so I'm not misrepresenting your point of view, mm -hmm. and, and so I can know whether I appropriately agree or not, what kind of firearm specifically would you uh, remove from law-abiding citizens or so, bar them from in, in how? So AR-15, right? What kind of gun is that? An AR-15 is a is a rifle. Right. So I would believe a that a semi-automatic rifle. Right. Semi-automatics would be something that don't need to be in the hands of citizens. Okay. So so no handguns. I mean, the thing is that like handguns and pistols have different like caliber compared to semi-automatics or uh, automatic guns and semi-automatics. The thing that that kid used, like it was much more of a severe type than say just a handgun. No. No, and Virginia Tech was just committed with handguns. Um, let me ask you, are you aware of what the differentiation is between automatic and semi-automatic? No. And by the way, I'm not trying me. to be a smart, smart ass in this no, at all, yeah. but a lot of people I'm have sat like... down and said this, and they, they don't know. And that's, uh, honestly, it's, it's because of the disservice from the media in mm. deliberately conflating them. Okay. So, a fully automatic weapon, machine gun would be, you know, pull the trigger, it keeps firing until the, the magazine is empty. Okay. A semi-automatic would include all pistols. Okay. Um, it's pull the trigger once, a bullet comes out. Bang, right. bang, bang. Right. That's most hunting rifles. So that's why I say, you know, the AR-15, by the way, uses a caliber of 223, which is really a, a glorified varmint caliber. It's actually not the most uh, powerful caliber out there. It's, it's not even close. Most hunting rifles that people used to take down deer are actually significantly more powerful as well as being semi-automatic. Okay. Um, many well, the vast majority of mass shootings are carried out not using uh, rifles at all, just using run-of-the-mill handguns, which happen to be semi-automatic. So um, does any of that, I guess, change your point of view? Because you were under the presumption that these were military-style rifles and semi-automatics, knowing that you would effectively be removing... You, you, the only way you could do it is saying, okay, a ban, ban on all firearms. Or what about a ban on certain firearms rather than all? Okay, well that comes back to how do you determine which firearms. Let me do this, I guess, first, because then we can get into, it seems to me that, um, like I said, you're, you don't know a whole lot about firearms. I'm not an expert, necessarily, by any means. I was raised in Canada, how much of an expert can I be on firearms? But uh, I've learned quite a bit in becoming a responsible <laughs> firearm owner. What do you believe the Second Amendment is? I think it's a right to defend ourselves. Okay. Right? Uh, Self-defense. Um, in the case of uh, you know, in the case of a need of self-defense, right? But mass shootings, those aren't self-defense. Well, no, but that's that's a crime, right? Mass shootings. Right. I'm saying, but before we get into that, that's a crime, and we both agree. Listen, none, none of us, no one here is advocating for mass shootings. I right. want to make sure that we agree on that. And I appreciate you sitting down and keeping it civil. We've had people just come by and scream and knock the camera. So I, I want to make sure you understand. Yeah. I am very anti-mass no, 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 shooting or criminal behavior. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but you said the Second Amendment is for defense. I think. We need to fundamentally uh, find out where we agree first before then right. we determine where we disagree. Okay. So the Second Amendment, you believe, is, is, is for defense, but how so? Defense against what? Attackers. Um, I believe I was, I was talking to some people out there, and they said that, like, in case the government goes against you, you can use um, guns as a, like, as a self-defense as well. So, and was that the first time you'd heard that concept? Mm -hmm. So you'd, you'd never heard before about the Second Amendment being a safeguard against a tyrannical government? Yeah. Okay. That's why it was written. Right. Uh, that's, that's, that's the whole purpose for it. So um, with that context, you have to understand at that point they were basically uh, ensuring 
just like the First Amendment, your freedom of speech. Remember, you can run off right now and say, I hate him, he was mean, he's terrible, and you have the right to say it. I mm -hmm. would prefer that you didn't, uh, but the Constitution says you have that right. The Constitution also ensured that the citizens had the right to arm themselves. Um, by the way, the same kind of armaments that the, the, the military had at that point. Um, that's what it was for. It was for protection against both internal and external threats. The government, right. and of course, to protect your, your farm, your family, your property. Mm -hmm. That's why it exists. So that's what the Second Amendment ensures. Okay. Um, I guess since that was the first time you've, you'd heard that, but uh, can we, I guess, agree on that as a starting off point? I suppose. I think my only issue with it is that there's like a, a very, a very like, it's a culture like defense of guns and having guns is a very American culture. Like why isn't this a problem in say Australia where um, they had enacted a gun ban, a ban on assault rifles I believe, and then they administered a buyback program where over 650,000 uh, guns were bought back and their homicide rates and suicide rates by gun violence dropped significantly. Okay. A couple of things I'd like to unpack there. Uh, two things said, why do we have this culture in the United States? Right. Now, I'll acknowledge, for example, where I'm from in Canada is different than the United States. Mm -hmm. So why is there a gun culture in the United States? Um, because you have other societies who kneel for royalty, who didn't fight off a tyrannical government. We left, and in order to make sure that you're free to practice your religion, in order to make sure that you're free to speak. By the way, that's also not a right in Australia or Canada. Freedom of speech doesn't exist anywhere else outside of the United States. Not to its full capacity. A lot of people don't realize that. They go hand in hand. We were the country who fled the world's greatest superpower one century mm -hmm. only to become the world's greatest superpower the next century. That's never happened to that degree. And that's because we were a country founded on the idea of private citizens being able to own firearms. We fought off a tyrannical government. We didn't submit to them. So that will change the culture, just as you see a different culture in Japan versus Germany, right? There are cultural differences. Mm -hmm. When you're a culture born through violence, and I would say virtuous violence, um, I mean, I would say it certainly was virtuous violence to fight a war to end slavery. Wouldn't we agree? You can commit acts of violence that are morally virtuous, and you can commit acts of peace that are morally reprehensible. Right. You can peacefully sign a warrant for millions of people to die, and that has happened. Mm -hmm. So that is why. There's a fundamental mistrust of government. We fought off a government, and we wanted to ensure that we would be able to do that in the future. Because George Washington, um, actually George Mason said, who is the militia in the Second Amendment? He said, why, it's, it's the whole people. George Washington fought off militias. You know, there are all kinds of warring militias in this country. Right. Founded. The easiest thing he could have done would have been, all right, ban guns, no more militias. George Washington didn't. You know why? Because he said, I need them to keep us in check. Our founding fathers understood since they had just fled and fought off tyranny that it can happen within one generation. It can happen within less than a decade. So that's why it's ingrained into our culture. It's a different culture. Um, you may not agree with it, but that's why the Second Amendment exists. Does that answer maybe your question as to why it's culturally different? Right, but I believe maybe the culture was different back then, like the context is different now. Okay, well let's, let's get to that because I wanted to get to your second issue. You mentioned Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, so you mentioned a buyback buyback program. It was a mandatory buyback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a gun ban. Um, it's interesting to me that then you said, well, and then gun suicides and gun crime went down. Or guns by, by uh, gun related suicides and gun related uh, homicides. Okay. But they didn't completely ban guns because they did, um, I think if I'm not mistaken, they did enact uh, a new permit system. Right. But it's a right. mandatory buyback. Right. You could say it's like if, if I put a ban on all epauletted black coats right now and it's a mandatory buyback where you have to turn that in or I'm going to send government men with guns, by the way, ironically, to your house to take your jacket, mm -hmm. that's a ban, right? Right. You don't have a choice in the matter. Then you can say afterward, well, we're going to make you get this tax stamp and we're going to make you go through this process and you can get your, your pretty black jacket back. You wouldn't say... Oh, okay. That's 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 a real respect for my rights there, Mr. Government. I appreciate it. It's, it's, it's pretty pretty rough. So it was a mandatory buyback. And you mentioned that there was a decrease in uh, gun harm, homicides and suicides. First off, there is conflicting data there that it didn't affect I gun crime that. at all. Yeah. But there's certainly no conflicting data that it did not affect violent crime. So uh, the question becomes, if someone kills himself with a gun or if someone kills himself with a knife, um, you're 19 times, for example, more likely to be knifed. Uh, my concern is with violent crime, it's not necessarily a gun, and it shows you that it doesn't matter what you do with guns, violent crime remains unchanged. Right. Now, what does change 
that, for example, in the United States is that there are far more defensive uses of firearms uh, that save far, far more lives than they take. So uh, the question becomes, I think because you're, you're, you're empathetic, um, you're kind of, I, I don't say this, I don't want to be arrogant, I think you're learning some historical context for the Second Amendment, hopefully. Uh, and I would encourage mm -hmm. you to go read it. Don't take my word yeah, for no, it. Yeah, no, seriously. Like LeVar Burton. Don't take my word for it. Mm -hmm. Don't you hate it when he does that and reading Rainbow and then some <laughs> six-year-old that's like, oh, I'm supposed to take a six-year-old's recommendation? Yeah. <laughs> so don't take my word for it. So then it, that, now it comes back to the issue. If it didn't necessarily work, um, understanding why we have the Second Amendment now, are you still comfortable with stripping people of their rights to protect themselves? I don't think that's the issue with like, I think, I guess like, yeah, talking to you, it boils down to like this really intense culture around guns and having them and like the context has changed now. So we're not as afraid of our government turning on us anymore as, you, as we were. We're more afraid of mass shootings and people turning on each other. I see. I think that's very, that's very misguided. Why? You, you, you're more afraid of a mass shooting than um, government overreach? Yes, I suppose so. You mean by government overreaches and government takes over? Infringing upon your rights, yeah, tyrannical government. Um, I think, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 18. 18. Oh, really? Okay, 18. Well, there you go. You're a very sharp uh, young lady at 18. Um, very well spoken. Uh, you just haven't lived through it. It doesn't take a lot. I mean, you understand that can happen very quickly. It's still happening across the world right now. Right. Tyrannical governments. I mean, you can see how quickly a government can change. Look at Turkey. Right. Right. L look at Iran in the 70s and Iran today. I mean, rights are removed like that, like clockwork. You see it with Australia, a gun buyback, a mandatory gun buyback. These people were obeying the law one second and then were fugitives from the law the next because someone decides to change a law. This happens all the time. And in the realm of human history, uh, major global conflicts, it's not that long ago. But I mean, um, and the only way to, we're the only country to say, hey, we recognize the human condition. Right. We recognize that human beings are inherently capable of evil and corrupt, uh, be, being corrupted. So let's safeguard against that and make sure that every individual has the right to protect themselves. Because that's the fundamental worldview, right? Right. Is, uh, do you believe that good people have the right to protect themselves against bad people, whether that's government or a gang member? Well, um, that's that can, uh, too hard to think about, to be honest. Like, I think that argument that um, the only thing that... Um, stops a bad guy with the gun is a good guy with the gun. I think that's a little bit shaky to think about just Why? because um, that doesn't make much sense to me. You can't always, uh, I don't know, I just don't, I think that argument isn't as valid as it could be. I had I had some stats in my head, but I forgot. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, no, these, I haven't These cameras seen. do that to you. Um, <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. If I were able to provide you with irrefutable evidence that that is true, as well as anecdotal evidence, would you consider changing your opinion? I suppose, but I would have to depend. It would depend on the source as well. Okay. All right. Let me let me give you the information in the source, and I would encourage you to Google it afterwards. Um, how many guns do you believe in the United States? Sorry, how many lives do you believe are taken by guns in the United States each year? You're going to say three thousand, three hundred thousand, aren't you? No. 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 How many lives? No. 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 Really? No, that's that's way too high. Really? Yeah. Wait. Okay. Lives <laughs> taken by guns. I'm not sure. I can't uh, approximate. If you include suicide, it's in the thirty. 30,000. 30,000. 30, That's good. Yeah. It's, Sorry. Take it, multiply it by I was 10. I listening but, a lot, so. Uh, and then uh, it's, uh, if you take away suicide, it's in anywhere from 12,000 to 16,000, okay. depending which source you use. Now, how many uh, lives, how many people are saved each year in the United States through defensive uses of firearms? I'm not sure. Are you going to? Yes. Wait, would you repeat your question, please? How, how many defensive uses of firearms would you say occur in the United States, meaning lives saved? people say protected through legal defensive use of firearms each year. So we've just established about, you know, 12 to 16,000 excluding suicide lives are taken. Oh, okay. But how many are saved? I'm not sure. Minimum 500,000. Really? Likely over 3 million each year, according to the CDC. Okay. So I'd say that's a legitimate source, right? It's not CNN. This is the CDC. Uh, a National Safety Council. So you're talking exponentially higher numbers of people whose lives are saved through defensive use of firearms than lives are ever taken. But that still negates the idea that that people are still able to go out and commit mass shootings, uh, which I think under the definition mass shooting includes uh, four people or more that are killed by uh, the very, gun. That's correct, yeah. Right. I, I, as a matter of fact, I appreciate you say that because now they've tried to tweak the numbers and say it's six or more to make it seem as though the assault weapons ban worked mm -hmm. when it didn't. The number has always been four or more, so I appreciate that you use that. Um, yeah, but again, the, 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 it's such an outlier, such an outlier mass shooting 
uh, as far as the statistical likelihood of death in the United States, or even when it comes to gun crime. Uh, when you remove suicides, it's very, very low, and then when you remove gang-on-gang -gang violence, it's even lower. The statistical likelihood of you being shot is unbelievably low, and it is much lower if you have a firearm yourself that you can use defensively. Okay, so then what if we brought the argument that about this uh, this kid that had like, a closet full of guns and was able to go into a school and shoot a bunch of people? Why is it that a kid has guns? Okay, um, well, first off, this, there were like 39 uh, uh, warnings issued on this kid, 39 incidents recorded, two reported to the FBI. I think he blew away like a chicken with a handgun. This kid was not supposed to Killing legally frogs. have fire. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's like, yeah. if, you're, if your neighbor's killing frogs, you might want to make a phone call. Um, that is people failing to do their job. Mm -hmm. Legally, can't own a firearm. And that's why I would say, you've never purchased a firearm, I would assume, right? No. I would encourage you to do so. And listen, go to a, fi go to a firing range, learn how to shoot a gun. At, at the very least, if you ever run into a situation where you're near a firearm or have to use it, so you, you have proper safety training. I right. encourage everyone to do that. And if you go purchase a firearm, you'll see the background check that has already taken place. You'll see that you can't purchase a firearm if you're a felon. You'll see you can't purchase it if you even have committed violent misdemeanors or domestic abuse or if you've been uh, ruled mentally defective. You go through this background check. I have had to go through it every single time I purchase a firearm. Are you sure that's the same in all different states? Yes. This is a federal background check. Now, if we're talking about some, uh, for example, these FBI tips, or in the case of a military tribunal where someone just wasn't reported, that is the failure of someone to do their job. That doesn't require new legislation. That requires people obeying legislation. And then we get into the issue of, listen, criminals break the law. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people fail to do their job. And guess what? People who fail to do their job in these instances were in government. So again, we're talking about the gross incompetency of government, and the solution is to put more power in the hands of the government by disarming private citizens. I just think it's a fundamentally fra flawed premise. Um, one final thing I find interesting, so that's the empirical, the evidence, far more lives saved than taken. Uh, I would encourage you to go research it. Okay. Um, let me ask you this, if you go and, and search that and you find that that bears out from the CDC, would that change your opinion on uh, the Second Amendment at I'm all? I'm still not sure. It's a very murky issue, to be okay. honest. Well, you started off pretty confident, and now you're not sure, so well, I think you were going to change my I mind. Just, it sounds like we're finding, we're, we're coming like this, a little, coming closer. I suppose. I think that it's, I still stand that you still can have a right to a gun, but it does not need to be nearly as accessible as it is currently. I, I still haven't mm -hmm. heard any, any different proposal outside of a gun ban, because you said that, but then you bring up Australia, just which is like, a gun ban, and then, yeah. you know, the Second Amendment. So I, I would encourage you to, to look at those sources. Let's assume those are true. I, w I would like to think a sharp 18-year-old lady such as yourself would look at that and that overwhelming statistical evidence and say, okay, this needs to play a part in my decision. Um, but obviously you'll make your own decisions. And then we go to the anecdotal. You talk about how this idea of a good guy with a gun stopping with a bad guy with a gun I think is just, you know, you, you think is incorrect. So obviously you mentioned the Florida shooting. Do you remember the Sutherland Springs shooting? You don't remember the Sutherland Springs? This is, it's not, this is not, an, I, I'm, I'm amazed. It, no, it happened here in Texas. And it was more deadly than Florida. You know, the, the church was shut up. The church was shut up in Sutherland Springs outside of San Antonio, Texas. This no, just happened a couple, recall. only a few months ago. Yeah, deadlier shooting. Well, there's so many been Does, happening. Um, no, 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 no. There haven't been so many happening, and this was one of the biggest. Uh, does the name Stephen Williford mean anything to you? Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of how to frame this here. I don't want to be contentious at all, but I, I think, let me put it this way. I think it is a tremendous disservice that has been um, committed against you from the media and probably this educational establishment uh, for you to be this uh, uh, uninformed on some of these pivotal issues. The Sutherland Springs shooting is more deadly. It was a church that was shot up, okay? okay? In Texas, not that far from here. And Stephen Williford, you don't know him because he wasn't on the news, wasn't a story. I'm sure you've probably seen the high school students, right, from Florida, mm -hmm. going around making the rounds. Well, Stephen Williford is the man who stopped the shooter. He stopped the shooter with an AR-15. He was an NRA certified instructor. Okay. No town hall. We didn't talk about it. More deadly shooting happened in your backyard. You don't even know about it. Does that concern you? Because that was a good guy with a gun, stopping a bad guy with a gun. But then that's just one incident. Happens all, no, then that's why I'm, I'm combining that with the statistical evidence that there are far more lives, as I talked about from the CDC. So the evidence, the preponderance of evidence points to far more lives saved than taken. And I'm just trying to give you an anecdotal example of a more deadly shooting that occurred recently in a place that's closer to you that the media didn't cover. I mean, that, then, then that's really just talking alarming. about the media, really, and like what they'd cover and not. Well, so. but the point is, 
that would be uh, concerning to me. If this is the first time you're learning that the Second Amendment is to uh, protect ourselves against a tyrannical government, I, I think that's pretty pivotal. I'm, I'm kind of surprised it isn't taught in American history class. I was I was Canadian. I learned Canadian history, so I felt it's incredibly boring. It's like we said, all right, give, and you know now we have the Queen on our money. Um, but they don't teach the Second Amendment in American history in schools. I find that concerning. I find it concerning that people think we're in a worse place with guns than ever. That um, that we have more gun crime than ever. Um, I find it concerning that. Young, you're very, clearly a very smart girl, and I don't say that to uh, to, to uh, patronize you. Um, but I find it concerning that someone as articulate as as smart as you isn't aware of how many lives are saved through use of firearms, why we have the right to firearms, and then in particular, a news story that the media really should go gaga over that occurred in your home state where you are studying, where a man saved lives with a firearm. But isn't okay. it? I'm so sorry. No, no, I was just saying, that's very, I find that very, do you, does that not? I know, it's, that, it is quite concerning? concerning, but isn't it more concerning that, um, I was doing research on this last night, but because um, okay. I just, yeah, um, according to, I think, the United, United Nations and the Human Development Index, that, um, that in the United States, we're 22.9 times more, have 22.9 more homicides per million people than, say, Germany or Switzerland, which was like 7.7 .7 and like, I think, 9 for both of those. So isn't that more alarming as well? Well, I think you're referring to gun homicide. Right. Yeah. Because uh, violent gun crime related, rates... Gun-related homicides. Yeah. I see, I think what's important to compare... First off, one thing I do have to say, and I'll, I'll go along with that, uh, just for the sake of us having this discussion, violent crime rates are difficult to compare across countries because there are different standards, kind of like infant mortality rates. Right. People have different standards for what, can, you know, what actually um, is considered an infant. Um, but violent crime is actually higher and has seen a worse trend in places like the UK than in the United States. And in Sweden, particularly, uh, and in Germany, things like rape uh, have been increasing while they've actually been going down in the United States. These are very alarming uh, crimes. Now, if you're just talking about gun crime, okay, but you're 19 times more likely to be stabbed than shot. Again, these the numbers are so, so minimal, but the media focuses on it. Uh, I think I, it's more important to focus on the overall crime trends and violent crime, not the tool of the crime. Because if you're going to attribute all of these issues to an inanimate object and ignore the totality of, of evidence, I, I think you're looking in the wrong place. Okay, I understand um, that. And, 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 and yeah. also something else, I mean, keep in mind that, um, you know, we're, we're also the only place out of all those places you mentioned that has freedom of speech, or you can't be jailed for saying something offensive. So that's amendment number one. Okay. And amendment number two. All right. Don't want a firearm. So it comes down to, I think, your fundamental view of human rights and then the statistical data and realities of, of gun violence and, uh, and, and, you know, where you line up on that. But it sounds to me like you're, you're doing some research. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully you continue to do more. I, I really do encourage you to fact check me after this. Right. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. No, I had like a document there. I just like straight up forgot it. You can just tweet me yeah. and tell me if okay. you think I'm, you know, like, hey, you were wrong, you suck, and I get that all the time. But don't I don't think, think you do probably, that. I know, you <laughs> no. seem like a very nice person. Um, so would that, though, if you go and you do this research, and everything that I've said here, let's say, is mostly true, does it maybe change your view a little bit? Um, probably not within this discussion. Like, as shortly, I can't just radically change my views. No, no, not within this discussion. But if you oh, go home and obviously. do this research and... Well, yeah, like, because then I have more context. Okay. But, you know, probably not now. I'm still No, I don't, I don't want you to right now. That's also yeah, why I don't think we should views. be proposing legislation right now. I don't mm -hmm. think an emotive response, a knee-jerk response, is uh, conducive toward, you know, pro productive legislation in any capacity. Or even... You know, productive formation of opinions. So I don't want you to knee jerk. I don't want you to develop an opinion right now. Sit, let it percolate a little bit. Go do some research. Um, I would encourage you to look up the Sutherland Springs shooting. I would encourage you to Google CDC lives saved firearms or de CDC defensive use firearms, and um, you know see, see where you line up. But okay. I appreciate you so much taking the yeah. time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, did you like this video? Of course you did. Let's there's something wrong with you. In which case you can comment below. What's your problem with this video? We want to hear from you and we promise you 100% I give you, my word is my bond, we'll answer every single negative comment. Uh, for those who are normal, you can leave a thumbs up and subscribe.